All right, Dima, first question. How much did you sleep the whole time you were in Vegas? I made bad decisions, let's put it like this. Uh, <laughs> I think at Friday I slept one or two hours. Um, oh no, even before that. At first day it started, I slept one to two hours. At Friday, this was pretty bad, also one to two hours. And Saturday we had an after party that I shouldn't attend. So I had an hour of sleep after that. And yeah, I regret this for the Sunday, but I made it through and now I got five hours the last day. So I feel like a newborn. All right, let's start with CJI. Nicky Rod secured the bag and came home with a million dollars. How happy are you with his performance? Yeah, uh, I try to be indifferent about the result, but I'm really happy with his performance because he could display what uh, he was doing pretty much the whole camp, destroying people. Like, we had at one point four people going against him, one after the other, and you might think it gets better and better with everyone, but it got progressively worse for the opponents. So that's what Nicky Rod is doing, dominating and, yeah, winning. What do you think Nicky Rod's key to success was at CJI? I think he was more focused than ever, and obviously the preparation helped him because now people can't run away from him. If I tell them to roll with Nicky Rod, they have to roll with Nicky Rod, so he could actually have the best training that he possibly can get. Um, technically, he always, or like what I saw, was very interested in techniques, so he was getting better on his own already. But now, especially where every one of us is together and we can troubleshoot, it's even easier for such a great athlete to get better. And this is what you see, one of the best in the world, if not the best athlete and jiu-jitsu practitioner right now. Man, look, Nicky Rod looked hyper-focused, he looked confident, he went four for four subs to win the million. Could he have had a better performance? The only thing that he could have done better is in the first match not getting thrown into the wall, but it was perfect because it hyped CJI even more, so he probably did it on purpose and then he just dismantled every opponent. So, no, I don't think he could get or could have a better performance. It seems like, from our perspective, this was your easiest job all weekend. Can you tell us if there are any specific challenges with, uh, with Nicky Rod or what is all plain sailing? Nah, it's pretty easy with Nicky Rod. Like, Nicky Rod is a veteran <clears throat> in competing, so it's pretty much just making sure that everything around him works out. And yeah, it was pretty easy to coach Nicky Rod, yes. Perfect. Let's switch on to J-Rod. After going out first round, last ADCC, he defended with he defended the B-team brand and came home with silver. How do you feel about this? Uh, I think I'm the happiest about this because J-Rod deserved to have a amazing performance. He worked really, really hard for this. Sorry, guys. <coughs> Still no voice because of the uh, weekend. But yeah, uh, he deserved this performance. He worked his ass off. He added the most new skills, I would say. So now you can say that he's only an athlete anymore. He's also a technician and his jiu-jitsu is really beautiful, in my opinion. And he could display it in all of his matches. Jay had matches with Achilles Rocha, Ryan Aiken, Chris Rojek, and Giancarlo Bodoni. Which matches stood out to you from that run? It's hard to not say. The first two were pretty epic. Like the first match where he got behind his back after the long break, choked him out. The energy was amazing. The second match he dominated one of the yeah dark horses of the tournament, I would say. He who did Ryan Atkins sub? Uh, Pedro Mourinho. Pedro, yeah, Pedro Mourinho. I think Pedro Mourinho was number two seed or something like this. So we were prepared to face Pedro Mourinho. And then we have Ryan Atkins. And I know this guy. You shouldn't underestimate him. He had a tough match against him, but dominated in the later half of the match. And the final. Like, if I could watch only one match over and over again in ADCC, it's the final against Giancarlo. One of the best matches ever in ADCC history and definitely the match of ADCC this year. After the event, you mentioned something about rumble passing. Can you briefly describe what that is and what Jay was or wasn't doing? Yes. So rumble passing is the art of passing like a wrestler wrestles, especially against seated guard. And before our camp, he just engaged into guards, okay? That's why people could just grab his legs and entangle. So we added the skill of rumble passing to his game, and now it's pretty difficult to entangle into his game. And you see it in the stance, in the hand fight, in the rules that we establish. And yeah, now he's a different grappler. Obviously the goal was gold, but how happy are you with Jay's performance? 
Yeah, so for me the goal is never gold, silver, bronze. The goal is to do everything possible that we can in our preparations and just go out and do it. And this is what J-Rod did. And even more important is just playing good jiu-jitsu. Like this is why we are here. You can win, but if you're just winning on advantages or you're not doing anything, this will not help the sport. This is not exciting for me. But yeah, if you display good jiu-jitsu, this is the best thing. And this is what J-Rod did. All right, let's talk about the rest of the squad. We had a lot of guys in action. Start, starting with uh, CJI, let's talk about Joseph, Kenta, and Nicky Ryan. Give us your thoughts on how they did. Yeah, so let's start with Nicky Ryan. I briefly talked about this in an interview with Luke Thomas. This guy couldn't walk. So if you're giving him shit, try to not walk and compete against one of the best under 80 kilograms competitors, Andrew Tackett. When I arrived here, both of his legs were fucked. On one leg, it was his actual foot. On the other leg, he had no ACL and it buckled. You, got, you guys know what he did? He came to training every single day. He worked his ass off. And in the first half of the camp, he looked amazing. But then he actually couldn't walk anymore. So he could only train once a week. So he's a warrior. He was going out there and trying his best. But for now, we need to tell him to freaking rehab take it, do surgery and get healthy. And if he gets healthy, that's where we can con uh, continue. He's a warrior, uh, nothing bad to say about Nicky Ryan. So now let's talk about Kenta. I think he had a good showing against Hulk. Hulk is a veteran, one of the, I would say, best 88ers in ADCC history. And I think he won the first round and we made a mistake, Damien and I, because we thought he was down 0-2. And yeah, this is why we told him to be more aggressive, so we take a bit of responsibility there. But it was still a good showing for Kenta. And Joseph looked amazing. First match against Varela, like, it was definitely more dominating than the last match that they had. And the second match against Hulk, he also was winning up until the last, uh, last minute, I would say. And yeah, Hulk was the better man. He had the trick in his arm sleeve and yeah, can happen. Still, Joseph Chen was the best Joseph Chen that I ever saw. All right, let's talk about ADCC. First off, Owen Jones made it to day two. He got two big submission wins. Yeah, so Owen is the man. If you're around him, you feel the energy. The first day when I saw him, I got so pumped that I screamed my lungs out of me. And this is why I don't have a voice anymore. So I normally don't scream, but his energy is magnificent. You, you are in the moment with him. And yeah, I'm not surprised by especially submission against Gabe Sousa. We know that Owen Jones is one of the best in the world. And the first two matches, he it was crazy what he did. He is a highlight reel. And I think a lot of people are now aware of who Owen Jones is. Because before that, he, uh, before that I think he had 30 to 1 odds a couple weeks out. So we were thinking about betting a lot of money on him. But I think now the odds will be different for the next ADCC. And he lost his semifinal match. So he is in the top four against Pato. And again, I would say this is a mistake of my part because we changed the strategy in the end. We actually changed it from uh, passing him to try to play legs with him. And he got a good footlock against Pato, but Pato demanded that he is uh, recountered after that. And then we unfortunately lost. But that's the game again. Next time we do a better job and everybody knows now who Owen Jones is. Jay and Chris Wojcik had a fight in the semifinals. How do you approach coaching that one on the day? Yeah, so I obviously help both of them throughout the camp and also in ADCC. And normally you don't want to coach teammates against each other, but the thing is, Jay and I just clicked from the beginning and he was one of my uh, main f things to look at, if I can say it like this. So. He got the most out of the technical training that we did and we connected pretty well. So I really like Jay and this is why I stayed with Jay and Chris had his all-time coach, I think, with him. So fair game, fair play. And I'm really impressed by both of them that they reached the semis. Think about this. Both of them didn't win the trials, but now they are around the four best people in the world in 88. So this is... Uh, pretty impressive to me and you see that with a lot of work and dedication you can reach everything. Declan did well picking up two wins but ran into Kynan. Are you happy with his performance at ADCC? Yeah, uh, I'm definitely happy with the camp and how he improved. Again, I tried to not look too much at the results, but if you look at it, he lost against a gold, a two-time gold medalist this year, but he also won against one. He has a win against Baby Shark. Uh, maybe he's weighing 
twice as much as him, but still a win against a gold medalist. Joseph, did you ever win against an ADCC gold medalist? Never. You see, <laughs> Declan did. So as long as you, as long as you didn't beat a gold medalist in ADCC, two times gold medalist, you can't say anything. He is. All right. When you joined the camp, there were a lot of people talking shit online about you. Now that the camp is over, the results are in. Do you have anything to say? I think they will continue talking shit, and that's okay because also in the beginning I said the more they talk shit, the more people uh, know about me, and most people are usually smart, so they will back me up. So please continue talking shit. I still love you. I have no enemies, and to be fair, I don't hear them too much anymore. So where have you been, haters? I'm waiting for you. All right, what's next for Dima? And we'll, when will we see you again? Yeah, so this was definitely not the last time that you see me at B-Team. I'm a part of B-Team, I love B-Team, and I will, keep, uh, I will continue to keep helping with the structure, giving the guys direction so they know what to do and what to work on until I'm back for the next camp, probably in a couple of months. So I see you soon, and this is only the beginning. So guys, if you want to check out my journey and my training systems, just check my Patreon. It's, if you look at Instagram, just type Dima BJJ, you will find me and my Patreon is Dima Morovani Grappling BJJ. Also, if you're interested in other things like private seminars, just DM me on my Instagram and hopefully I see you soon.